In this video, I'd like to talk about the polar form of complex numbers, which essentially relates a complex number in terms of its angle from the positive real axis and its magnitude, its distance from the origin, which we also call its modulus or its absolute value. And let's say that we have some complex number z equal to x plus i times y. And we can plot this complex number somewhere on the complex plane. And let's draw a line from the origin to that point. And the length of this line we call the absolute value of z. And this length also has the name of modulus, or it's the magnitude of the line. Or this can also be thought of as a vector. And this complex number also has this angle, which we can call theta. And there are basically two main ways to represent this complex number z. We can use the x plus i y notation, which we call its rectangular form, or we can use its polar form relating the complex number z to its magnitude and its direction, its angle. Now, to essentially convert this rectangular form to polar form, we need to consider a little bit of trigonometry. So let's start by constructing a right triangle. We will drop a vertical line here and draw a horizontal line here. And the length of this vertical line would just be the imaginary component of the complex number, which is y, and the length of the horizontal component is the real part of the complex number, which is x. And we need equations relating x and y to the absolute value z and to this angle theta. Now, in a previous video, we derived the formula for the absolute value. We use the Pythagorean theorem that x squared plus y squared is equal to this hypotenuse, this magnitude squared. And we can just take a square root of each side so that the magnitude, the modulus of this complex number, z, is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And if we want to relate x and y to the angle, we need to use our right triangle trigonometry. And we can use so katoa to remember the definitions. And x is adjacent to this angle. And y is opposite the angle. And the magnitude, this absolute value of z, this is the hypotenuse. So to relate x to theta and this magnitude, we can use the cosine. Since the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, the adjacent is x and the hypotenuse is this magnitude of z, this absolute value of z. And to solve for x, we can just multiply each side by this absolute value of z, meaning that x is just the absolute value of z multiplied by the cosine of the angle. And likewise, we can do a very similar process for y, but now involving the sine function, since the sine of the angle is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, the opposite side is the y value, the imaginary component, and the hypotenuse is this absolute value of z, its magnitude. And again, to solve for y, we will multiply both sides of the equation by this absolute value of z, so that y is the magnitude, the modulus of z, multiplied by the sine of theta. And now we have a way to relate x and y to both the magnitude and the angle, the direction. And let's make a little bit of room and substitute what we found for y and x into this original equation for the complex number z. And by doing that, we now have that z is equal to x, which is the magnitude of z multiplied by the cosine of theta plus i times by y, which is the magnitude of z multiplied by the sine of theta and notice that we can factor out the magnitude of z from both of these terms so that we get 
the magnitude of the complex number z is multiplied by the cosine of theta plus i times by the sine of theta. And this right here is what we call the polar form of the complex number z, where z is now in terms of its angle and its magnitude, its length. And this expression here is famous in mathematics because it can be related to the complex exponential function with base e. And this was originally proven by Leonard Euler about 300 or so years ago, maybe a little bit less, that when you take the base of an exponential equation to be e, that number equal to 2.7128, and it's irrational, it's like pi, it goes on forever, and you raise this to i multiplied by an angle theta, this is equal to the cosine of theta plus i times by the sine of theta, meaning that we can rewrite z here, this complex number, in its polar form as the magnitude of z multiplied by e to the i times theta. And this probably seems a little bit confusing if this is the first time you're seeing this, but again, this was proven by Leonard Euler in the 1700s. And one of the most common ways to prove this is using techniques from Calculus 2, which involves something called a Taylor series or infinite sums, which can be a bit complicated. So for most people, if you're learning this for the first time in let's say a pre-calculus class, it will be a while before you can actually prove this statement, but it is certainly true. And one of the amazing ideas that comes out of this equation is that if you set theta equal to pi, then e to the i times pi will be the cosine of pi, which is negative one, plus i times the sine of pi, which is zero, and you can rearrange this to get e to the i times pi plus one is equal to zero, which essentially relates arguably the five most important constants in mathematics in this nice simple equation. And this equation, Euler's identity, was actually voted by professional mathematicians to be the most beautiful equation in all of mathematics.